Welcome to Horseshoeing Time, filmed live at the Farriers National Research Center and School here in Villanelle, Georgia. Hey, if you want your horse to be active, whether it is showing, trail riding, or pleasure riding, he needs to be healthy, in good physical condition, and properly trimmed or shod. After all, a happy horse makes a happy owner. In 1989, Ralph Casey began using a high-speed video camera and an adjustable shoe to study how to make horses perform better and run faster without injury. Casey became the leader in the field of farrier science. His research sparked such an interest, a group was formed to build the first Farriers National Research Center in the world. The purpose of the FNRC is to continue the study of shoeing and balancing a horse not only to help the horse perform better, but to stop some of the serious injuries created from improper shoeing. Today, Casey can make the horse perform better and run faster than ever before. Horse owners are fortunate to have access to the only Farriers National Research Center in the U.S. dedicated to the study of farrier science. So let me get everybody introduced. I'm a little tired. We've been out riding for five days, and that's five days of hard riding. This is Lisa. She's our big time keeper and one of our big wigs here on the show. And you, have you enjoyed everything? It's been great, except I've lost my voice a little bit and gotten, gotten good and dirty. I think I've got half a Wyoming in my nose. And right behind us is Rufus, her husband, and he's part of the Horseshoe and Time team. And some of them, I wish they could have been here, of course, you know, they have other things to do. But anyway, the, you know, a lot of folks think that all I do is I just shoe horses. I never ride horses. But I'm out here in Wyoming probably two times a year, sometimes three times a year. And generally when I come, I stay two or three weeks. And of course, now you're up in a high altitude when you get here, and believe me, it takes a toll on you. And a lot of times you lose your voice too, Lisa. The, uh, this is my horse here, my personal horse that I ride, Cody. And then you've got your horse. Mm -hmm. What's your horse name? Her name is Angel. Angel. Mm -hmm. And then we got Homer. Gus. Gus. <laughs> I'm used to riding with Stu a lot when I come out, and his horse is named Homer. We get it right, and I got a big chew tobacco in my mouth, folks, so you're just going to have to forgive me. You know, with all the beautiful scenery, Lisa, that I see around here, and we took a lot of pictures. Yeah. And you know, and I told you when we started out, you and Rufus, I said, you know, you need to know people. Because years ago, this is my old stomping ground, you get to know people, it makes it much better ride, much better time you're gonna have out here when you come out here. And guess what, gang? With all the pictures we take, we're gonna stop down at my old friends, and I'm gonna introduce you to him right down Stuart Wheat. He owns a photo shop right there. Believe me, when you take all those pictures and all that hard riding for five days, you don't want anybody to mess them up. And the beautiful thing about it is when you, you know, when I introduce you to some of these folks here in Du Bois, I'm not only going to give you some tips about shoeing and what you should look for and things you should carry. And, you know, that reminds me, uh, Ginger told me a few years back, you need to make a tape when people come out west because people are so intimidated. We hauled our horses all the way from Georgia out here. And it can be done. Mm -hmm. And when you get here, you don't know anybody. And she said, you ought to do a tape and show the do's and the don'ts of taking and coming out west riding horses because it's a whole different environment, folks. And gang, I'm going to introduce you to these folks in just a few minutes. You hang with us because we're going to ride our horses right into Dubois, right into town of Dubois, Wyoming. Stay with us. The Brotherhood of Working Farriers Association is an official sponsor of the Farriers National Research Center and School. We are a nonprofit association made up of caring horse owners and farriers alike, 
If you would like to see more research performed in helping to keep our horses sound and more continuing educational programs available for both horse owners and farriers, we encourage you to become a member. We hope you enjoy horseshoeing time, and isn't it time you have your horse shod right? Choose a BWFA certified farrier. One thing I like to do, I sit the camera folks on down, and uh, they loaded their horses up. But the one thing I like to do, gang, I like to show you that you can actually ride a horse right in this little town of Dubahu. And uh, in reality, you can ride right up to the photo shop. And what I'm going to do, gang, is introduce you to some folks when you come out here. A lot of people are afraid to get out and go up you know, off the ride or go out, come out west because it is so different. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a close-up view of them folks and introduce you. Then if you come out here, let me tell you, you'll definitely want to meet. They can tell you some of the most beautiful places. Anybody at home, beautiful places to ride you ever saw. Now if I get my horse to stand there, we're going to be in good shape because ground tying is very important. Stu? Hey, Ralph. How you doing? <laughs> Just fine. Good ride. And oh, that lovely little wife you got with us. You know, Stuart, that was a great ride. Good. Glad you enjoyed it. And you know, I've been coming out here for years, and I come out two or three times a year, and I go to other places. Yeah. We were just down, not recently, down in the Colorado. Yep. You know. And uh, well, I don't get to ride everywhere I go, but a lot of folks out there, they think that I just shoe horses. But I go a lot of places to ride my horse. And let me tell you, shoeing is important. But there's one thing that's just as important, to take them beautiful pictures. So I brought three rolls of film and these are long rolls <laughs> so what, I, what i'd like for you to do and you know gang you don't want your film messed up that's for sure so what you want to do and is talk to professional people and you want to bring it in where you know you're going to get quality work and another thing i like and this is not a big thing because Stuart's a personal friend of mine i come out here all the time this is not a commercial I'm telling you, these folks can point you in the right direction when it comes time for you to go right. So I'm gonna get our camera lady to move in to get a good shot of Stuart and his wife because they are super close friends of mine. And when you meet them, hey gang, you've already met them. This is Linda, this is Stuart. So when you come in to meet these folks, they can put you on the right track to go and make a beautiful ride. And there's nothing more beautiful and riding in a strange place, beautiful place with beautiful scenery with your horse. And hey, you know, my wife was telling me, Stuart, that a couple of years ago, I needed to make a dad blasted tape to tell all the do's and don'ts, because you know, there's a heck of a lot of do's and don'ts in this business when you're gonna go riding. Because you know, here's some things that happened to us that we were out there five days, all right? We had a broke rein, one broke rein, and we had a broke girth, uh, the strap, it broke it. So we had to make do. And so what I did, I made a tape to tell everybody the do's and the don'ts that you don't get in them little round pens running them horses around <laughs> record. You get out there, let me tell you, you're at the mercy. Especially when you get out there 20 miles, a shoe comes off. And that's something I try to get everybody involved is learning how to put a spare tire on. Because you put one out here, you put one of them little rubber boots on there, it just rubs the bubs completely raw yep. and they bleed. And you've seen that's, that before. That's right. Stu shoes horses too, gang. So when you have a problem, hey, you got to shoe off sometime in the trailer and you're out here, pays to know somebody. So get a close up at Stu where everybody out there, gang, you remember him. And hey, what we're going to do immediately, we're going to ride, I'm going to ride my horse right down Main Street and meet the rest of the camera crew because I got the trailer down there. And hey, I'm going to show you a place I like to go eat. Stay with us, gang. That I'm riding down the street, right on Main Street, and I'm, I'm alarming the dogs. I'm doing a little bit of everything. But I'm headed down to my favorite cafe. And you know, one thing I like to do is remind you that, hey, when you're riding on pavement, I'm going to give you that tip I'm reminding you. Just hold on, gang. You know, when you've been out riding, and we've been out for five days riding, one of the greatest things you can come to is my favorite restaurant and getting to know the person there, and it's the Wild Bunch Cafe. So that's where I spend my time in the afternoon once I've done all my riding. Now, 
just in a little bit, I'm going to give you some tips on what to do when you're riding on pavement. Hang with us, gang. We'll be right back. Now, what I'm doing here, Wayne, I'm going to take this nail. I've already uncinched it, and I'm going to pull this nail out. And hey, gang, kind of caught me right in the act here doing a little work. I'm going to pull this nail out, Wayne, right quick, Wayne. And what we're doing, let's move over here, Wayne. First of all, let me introduce you. This is a good friend of mine, Wayne. And Stuart Wheats introduced me to him. He's got a beautiful place here. And you know, gang, I told you yesterday, I was going to introduce you to some folks and let you meet them personally, right on TV. Because a lot of folks want to travel, get out, come out west. A lot of you are afraid to come out here. You don't have a horse. Well, Wayne, you got them covered. I got 45 of them. And the thing is, they can bring their horse, like I did. Yeah. You going to take care of them. And you got horses. For horseback ride, hunting trips, you got them covered all the way around? We do. We'll take them. And what's the name of our place, Wayne? Riverside Inn and Campground and Suit Outfitters. In other words, people can actually bring their campers and everything here. Yes. We got them covered every way they want to come. And Wayne's an old-timey horseshoer, too, so he got you covered there, too. And I'm yep. showing him a few little tips about shoes. And yesterday, Wayne, I was riding down uh, Main Street. Okay. And you know, a horse acts up every once in a while, and when he does, his feet slide out from under him, could fall and hurt you. Yep. You know, a lot of people think a horse can't fall. <laughs> we know better. We know a lot better. So what I did, I'm introducing Wayne to some Borium nails. And what we're gonna do, gang, and here's the thing, a tip I'm gonna give you here. You, you got a nice horse trailer, and you put that booger on that trailer with these Borium nails on, or it's really tungsten carbide. Okay. And they used to put that, uh, Wayne, on, on uh, drill bits to drill down through rocks. Okay, right. And so we used to call it the Texas stick, believe it or not. And then they got, recently, this is a new technology, putting it on the nail for a saddle horse. And so that's what we're gonna do. Until you told me I didn't know they made borium nails. Right, you used to <laughs> use the, the big borium. On the shoe itself. Right, but the hard part is, when you put them on the trailer, it tears the trailer up. Absolutely. Unless you fill it full of dirt, mm -hmm. which is a lot of work. But the easiest way is when you get where you're going, you can take, pull, you notice I pull one nail out, yep. one nail at a time. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one nail back in, then clinch it, and then put a, pull out another nail, and put another borium nail, and then when I put about three nails on each side, that's gonna give that horse a lot of traction yeah. on rocks, especially big old slate rocks. Oh yeah, we got some bad ones. And then when you decide you wanna go downtown like I did and ride right up to the photo shop and give them some film, your horse, if he acts up, he won't slide out from under you. So that's the beauty of it. Now, Wayne, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about your place and uh, because I want folks to meet you. Right. And uh, we're in, that they know you personally. Wayne, look right in the camera. I'm gonna get our camera person to pull in and look at this handsome guy. Now, you, you ladies <laughs> gonna be riding me. But, so I'm gonna give you Wayne's address that's gonna be there because this is one place, and I'm gonna get our camera lady while I'm getting set up to show them some different tractions and shoes and how shoes work and so on, especially out here. I'm gonna let our camera lady look at these beautiful cabins. In fact, I'm staying down here, gang. And when you come down, he's got cabins, he's got hookups and so on. And I wanted you to meet him personally where you'll know where to come to. And I think that's important, Wayne, when a person knows that they can go to a place and know the person and they're gonna get good service. Because I think the fear, when you've been to other places, you don't know a soul, yep. it, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, it's hard to get somebody to help you out. I mean. So let's talk about these shoes a minute. If this particular shoe here has got caulks on here and it's got a, a caulk up here on the toe. Now for soft ground, excellent shoe. But if you got on slate rock, it ain't too good. No. See? And then we got another shoe here, and this is the old shoe you picked up a while ago, and, and you see these occasionally with just heel caulks on it. The front of the horse is pulling, the rear of the horse is driving. So if the pulling part, you might want to use the toe on the front, and the heel caulks, you might want to use it on there, but if you're on pretty flat ground, you might just use the heel caulks. But if I was going up some of these hills, I'd probably want both. That's why we use those, because the mountain country, they're way better traction. For and it, and it's rough, and right, it is rough country. 
and I was telling you about the cliff. Well, it's not so rough where we're going to scare the people from coming right, out. Right, right. <laughs> but the thing about it is you don't want an accident the same as I am. Yeah. And riding a horse, we don't want that horse to get in any situation where we want him to have plenty of traction. Absolutely. And, if gang, if you out there and you want to ride your horse into town to do boys and get your – uh, uh, film developed, you might want to do what I'm doing. And this is what I did yesterday. Now, gang, you notice I was riding down, right down Main Street, but you notice my horse sort of acting up just a did, did bit there. But the thing about it, gang, I had some borium nails. And this is what I did. I pulled out a nail, and now I'm going to put a borium nail back in. But the purpose of it, right on the tip of the nail, there's borium. Okay? Now, you can get that. And, hey, I think... Any farrier that's been around a good bit today, if he continues the education, is going to know about borium nails. And if he don't, hey, give us a call. We'll let you know. I'm going to go ahead, Wayne. If we, are we running out of time here? Gang, how are we doing on time? Four minutes. Four minutes. Man, we got plenty we of, got time, a lot Wayne. of time. We're going to put the, go ahead and put this nail back in. And another thing I was trying to tell them about was a spare tire. I'm going to do another show while I'm out here while I'm about using a spare tire. And... Uh, we're going to work with Wayne maybe on a spare tire. And uh, because you get out there and lose a shoe, you know, a lot of people don't understand, Wayne, when you get out in this country and you lose a shoe and you're 25 miles nowhere, I sure don't want to walk back. No, <laughs> no. And it's, and it's simple as falling. The nail hole is already there Yep. because we've already shod the horse, but we didn't want to haul him in the trailer because we didn't want to tear the trailer up because those babies, Arts. them borium nails will dig right into pavement, steel. You cross piece steel, you won't slide on it either. So I'm going to turn my nail right. I'm going to stick it right here. Gang, now watch this. How easy it sounds. The hole is already there, and I'm just going to tap it right back in there. Hold still, sugar. I'm going to tap that booger, and then I'm going to bend it over. And a lot of times when I'm out now, I'll ring the nail. But here, I'm just going to bend it over for safety. And then a lot of times when I'm putting on a spare tire, when I'm out, I don't ring them. I just bend them over. That'll hold that shoe for 20 miles you get back in. If you get one on, you drive your four nails or three nails, and you bend that booger over. That thing's gonna stay in. Stay with us, gang. We're gonna be right back. For those of you who love horses and want to work outdoors and be your own boss, you may want to consider a career as a professional certified farrier. It's hard work, but very rewarding. One of the most highly recognized schools in the United States is right here in Villanau, Georgia, owned and operated by Ralph Casey since 1989. The Casey and Son Horseshoeing School has received the Horseshoeing School of the Year Award for over eight years. With Casey as your head instructor, you will receive the most up-to-date training in farrier science that is not available at any other school. Wayne, I'm going to go ahead and do it the old-fashioned way. And I'm going to do one nail at a time, and I think it's better that way because especially if you're trying to do so, you don't want that nail get hung. And here's one thing I learned is I reach down and I take one of you bend the nail over, Instead of wringing it off, I'm going to take the corner of my shoe puller and then I'm going to squeeze it. And here's a trick I learned. Hold your hand right there when you squeeze it and pinch that nail off because one of them flew off and hit me right in the eye. Yeah, that would be a bad day. And uh, see, we are already bent over. So it makes it real simple, especially if you're out on the trail or something. But normally I'm going to put these in. We got off on a spare tire. You know me, I'm going to ramble around a little bit. But anyway... <laughs> I've got my clinchers, and I'm just going to put this booger right up here on my knee, flip around here, just like this, gang. And you can do this with a horse. You just put it down there, and you take and squeeze, if I can get her to stand still, just squeeze that nail down just a little bit, and then pull up a little bit, and you've got a pretty flat clinch. Look pretty good. Looks good. All we got to do, all we got to do is take a breather. This altitude gets to me, Wayne. <laughs> but I'm going to put three on each side. Okay. And a lot of times, Wayne, the, uh, and, and Wayne, the reason I'm talking to Wayne here, not only does he own this place, and he's a super duper guy, but he's a horse here as well. And I'm going to take up a little time with him. But the whole idea was give him some good pointers to help him out. But another thing I wanted the folks out there, Wayne, to meet you personally, because, mm -hmm. you know, they come in, hey, Wayne, how's it going? Because they know who you are. Yes, absolutely. And I hadn't had a chance to meet your wife yet. She's in Montana right now taking care of her father who's really sick. So well, hopefully he recovers and she's supposed to be home tomorrow. You know, we get close to running out of time. And I've enjoyed being here. Going to be here a couple more days because I'm going to do another TV show. 
I'm going out. I've been gone five days up you in the mountain. Yesterday I looked, boy, I looked rough. You looked like you were ready for a shower. Yeah, I was tired. <laughs> hey, gang, remember this. Tune us in next week right here on Horseshoe and Time. And hey, Wayne, a happy horse makes a happy owner. It sure does. We'll see you next week right here on Horseshoe and Time. And hey, if you get a chance, come out Wyoming. See old Wayne. You're going to enjoy it. Bye-bye. See you next week. Have a good day.